Thank you, Father. You can be seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. How many people, don't worry, how many people feel they're in the house of God? And how many of you feel you are in the presence of God? And how many of you feel the Lord is here? Glory be to God. In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. At His right hand, there is pleasure forevermore. Hallelujah. So we are at the right hand of God, alongside with Christ. So there is pleasure forevermore. And here in the house of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Our viewers all over the world, I thank you for being part of what God is doing in this service today. Hallelujah. This Sunday is a Sunday of spiritual access and the month of spiritual access. Remember that Sunday, we talked about the power of praise. How many people feel lighter than the way they came? Amen. We are doing assessment. Huh? How many people feel they, you know, they feel lighter than the way they came? <laughs> you, you feel lighter. Amen. John, you feel lighter. Amen. I feel more lighter. Are you feeling lighter? Good. Glory be to God. The Lord is here. Tell your neighbor the Lord is here. Amen. So, divine access. I mean, spiritual access is divine access. I want us first of all to go to the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 32. Thank you, Father. And, uh, you know, access nile kufikia. When you talk about access, ni kufikia. Wakati umenda kwa juka, kununua chakula, for example, for instance, money give you access to the goods in the store. Money give you access to the services in the saloon. Money give you access to what? To the bus for transportation. Praise the name of Jesus. Money give you access to buy a house or a vehicle. Money give you access to do what? To take the child to school. Praise the name of Jesus. So we find there is that is monetary access but here we talk about spiritual access and we'll realize at the end of the service that the spiritual access is the mother of all keys even to all that we need for life and for godliness praise the name of Jesus spiritual access and when we talk about spiritual access there is a divine backing of it. There is a divine backing of this spiritual access. So let us first of all begin with the book of Romans chapter 8 and verse 32. And then we go to Romans chapter 5 verse 2. Praise the name of Jesus. So the Bible says, that uh, listen to this he who did not spare his own son is talking about the father who did not spare his own son and he gave him to us and the bible says but delivered him up for us all hallelujah that everyone will have an access to the son of god Everyone will have faith in Christ and will not perish. Everyone will have faith in the promises of God and will receive, have that access. He says, how shall he not with him, with him? That means you have access to Jesus and your access to Jesus give you access to the desires of your heart. He says that, uh -huh. 
He also, that's the verse 32, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Say all things. With Christ, we have access to all things. Because he did not spare him. Because he knew that when he has given Christ, he has given what the world that is meant need. So what you need is in Christ. Tell your neighbor, Tochote Mtakavyo Imukatika Christo. So when you have access to Jesus, you have access to your need, you have access to your health, you have access to peace, you have access to joy, you have access to prosperity, you have access to protection, you have access to excellence, you have access to progress. Success is in Christ. So Christ is in the center, in the called center of our faith. So he did not spare his son. He gave him all. And with him, he has given us all that we need. And now the Bible says, his divine power. Say his divine power. His divine power in Christ and in the knowledge of Christ has given up all that we need for life and for godliness. Praise the name of Jesus. His divine power. Say his divine power has given me all that I need in this life and in the life to come. Yes, you have access. This is a spiritual access. It gives you a key to open. Remember, Jesus as the key of hell and Hades. Do you know the key that you have? You read of the Bible. He says that I have given you keys to the kingdom of God. Amen. That whatever you open on earth shall be opened in heaven. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. Why did Jesus choose to take the key of hell and Hades and given us the key of the kingdom of God that you may have access? How many people did not leave somebody in the house today when you're coming to church? Just take up your hand. You did not leave somebody. What did you do to your door? You locked it, isn't it? And you put the key where? Somewhere. With you. So before you enter your house, what do you have to do? With the what? With the key. So that you can have what? Access to what? To your house. And when you reach a home, when you reach in the house, you feel like home. Because the house is home. So imagine, Jesus saying, I will not take the key of the heavens. Hallelujah. Remember, God did not spare his son, but he gave his him up to all. And with him, he gave us all things. And he says that he has given us the keys to the kingdom of God. Because when we have the keys to the kingdom of God, we have the access to the promises of God. Because these are in Christ Jesus. And he says in the book of Peter that his divine power, say it is divine power, has given us all that we need for life and for godliness. Let's read very fast the book of first, I mean, John the Gospel. Chapter 1. John the Gospel, chapter 1. Say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. John the Gospel, chapter 1. So the Bible says that of his fullness, say of his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. And of his fullness, we have all received and grace 
for grace or grace upon grace of his fullness god has given us jesus and he sees with him he has given us all things so now christ has the fullness fullness of what what you need for life and for godliness what do you need for life judy what do you need for this life huh say divine health isn't it what do you need for life you need a house to stay in what do you need for life you need money what do you need for life what else somebody say you need marriage it's correct you need job it's correct somebody say you need child it's correct what you need for life you need safety it's correct you need protection it's correct praise the name of jesus all this is divine power has given us in christ what do you need for godliness you need the grace you need what you need the spirit of god to enable you to i mean to to, to do what to venture the spirit world to venture to have victory in the spirit so you need for godliness in the righteousness praise the name of jesus so his divine power has given us all this can i hear bigger man his divine power has given us all this so to have access is to have a relationship with jesus to have jesus in you and you in christ by faith and now in christ there is fullness hallelujah and the bible says that in him there is fullness all of us we access we receive from his fullness and the bible says we are complete we are complete in christ jesus hallelujah Colossians chapter 2, think about that. You are complete in Christ. You are complete in Christ. Because you have become one eh? together with Christ. You see? Since Christ has fullness and is complete, you're walking with Christ like this. And the Bible says, Hallelujah, in Him there is fullness. We have all received from him. From him of his fullness. Not from his fullness. Look at that English. And I said, what Of his fullness. Of his. That means his fullness and in him. And him become part of our lives. Is somebody getting this? Christ and his qualities. Qualities. Become part of our lives. So of his fullness we have all received grace upon grace thank you brother and that grace hallelujah will lead you from grass the grave lifts i see the grace lifts the grace of god will lift you this grace is found in christ jesus the son of the living god who was given of us to us that of his fullness we may be partakers and therefore when we are partaken be conscious that you are complete in christ hallelujah say i am complete in christ confess it again i am complete in christ Go, i mean do it again i am complete in christ do you know what let people not despise you Ephesians 1 6 says, <laughs> Praise the name of the Lord. You are accepted. Say, I am accepted. Yes, you are not rejected. You are accepted. Man might want to reject you, but I want to tell you because God lives in you, they will find themselves accepting you. But the Lord has accepted you. If God says yes, who can say no? I say, if God says yes who can say no hallelujah say i am accepted i am complete i have fullness of god yes you are and when you are fullness of god nothing will care you 
If we thought challenges will come, the Lord will turn those tests into testimonies. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The enemy might think that he has afflicted you with scars. Let me tell you, those scars, because you have been accepted, they are being turned into stars. And your star will shine. No one shall dim it in the name of Jesus Christ. Because with Christ you are more than a conqueror. With Christ you are more than conqueror. Not a conqueror. You are more than a conqueror. Say, I am more than a conqueror. I am above only. Praise the name of Jesus. You are above only. You are not beneath. The Bible says that. You are first but not last. Do you know what? People might think uh, maybe the family where you are born, nobody cared about, nobody regarded you. When you say you have come from this home, the last you can anything go to come from so and so so. Huh? But they don't know that when the Spirit of God has connected you with God, you change to be a different person. Praise the name of the Lord. You are name changed as the name of the children of Israel. Hallelujah. His name Jacob was changed to Israel, meaning God's people. So the Lord is changing your name because now you have access. He has given you the keys of the kingdom. Let your kingdom come. Hallelujah. You know, there's sometimes Jesus spoke to his people who are contradicting him. When he cast out demons, they say, nah, he's using the powers of darkness, the forces of Belzebub. Do you know what he told them? He told them, if I cast out demons with the finger of God, do you know what? Know that the kingdom of God has come among you. Glory be to God. He told them, know that the kingdom of God has come among you. And you have the key. Who has the key? It is not Jesus. It is you. Say, I have the key to the kingdom of God. Jesus is very wise. What about if he took the key to the kingdom and just left the key to the hell? Huh? Some of us will be thrown to hell by fellow men. Have you ever seen someone say, go to hell? But I thank God they don't have the key to hell. It is Jesus who holds the key. <laughs> You go to hell because they cannot take you to hell. You can only go to hell if you want. But tell them, me the key that I have the key to the kingdom, the key to the kingdom. And you tell them, it is my master, Jesus Christ, who has the key to the hell in Hades. Praise the name of Jesus. It is Christ who throws people to hell, those the sons of perdition, but not a fellow man. They cannot throw you to hell. Because they don't have the key. Even yourself don't have the key. You have the key only to the kingdom. Praise the name of Jesus. And there is power behind this key. That whatever you bind on earth. Is bound in heaven. Whatever you lose on earth. Is lost in heaven. Whatever you permit on earth. You permit is permitted in heaven. Glory be to God. Praise the name of Jesus. We are chosen generation. We are people belonging to God. You are a holy priesthood. Only holy priesthood have the key to access the priesthood items. Hallelujah. Only those who are priests. You know the Bible calls us priests and kings. Somebody have not ever understood this. Why are you called priests and kings? Because you can mediate between the heavens and the earth. And also you have dominion over territory. A king has a dominion over territory. A priest ministers. Hallelujah. A priest is a minister. It is that stand for man between the heaven and earth. That your word that you speak matters in the heaven realms. Praise the name of Jesus. The word that you speak matters in the heaven realms. He says he has put the power in your tongue. And you see, the Lord confirmed the words of his servants, fulfilled the prediction of his messengers. If I say, God bless you, surely I speak blessing upon you. Praise the name of Jesus. Learn to bless one another. For the Lord says, I will bless those who bless you. Praise the name of Jesus. Do you want to be blessed? Then bless somebody else. Then the Lord will bless you.
Bless a child of God. God will bless you. Glory be to God. Spiritual access. Spiritual access. Children of God. Do you know this life is spirit? We have to cover the capability and the power to be able to operate in the spirit also. So that the, ma the manifestation of the thing that I see will manifest, will be fulfilled. You must first of all present yourself as a spiritual person. Hallelujah. You know what? When this man called Nicodemus a Pharisee, okay, a religious, I mean, person, a kaja kwa yesu, kamuliza, a kuja ushiku. The reason why he came at night is because people are known him as a Pharisee and the kind of teaching that they had which was not truthful could not allow him to walk a day to go and ask Jesus. Because there was no way akuna mbini wa maya ngetumia kama siku wenda usiku ambao will not, I mean, cause him at a